In the last episode, we visited the site where the very first shot was claimed to be fired here at the Battle of Gettysburg. Then we moved back towards town and we explored the actions of Lysander Cutler's brigade on the Union right flank north of the railroad cut. We also explored the assault on the railroad cut made by Rufus Dawes. So now we're back over on the Union left here on the edge of Herps Woods on McPherson's Ridge. And we're going to follow in the footsteps of the Iron Brigade as they're deployed in the field behind me and we're going to make our way into uh, the Herps Woods here, and we're going to clash with James Archer's Confederate troops making their way up Willoughby Run. So before we make our way into the Herps Woods, I wanted to show you the iconic cupola as it looked here from Reynolds Avenue. Now this is the spot where General Buford observed the unfolding battle, and this is where General Reynolds would ride up and uh, greet John. And if you've ever seen the movie Gettysburg, you can't not come here and not reenact the scene in the cupola. So here it goes. All right, so I'm General Reynolds. How goes it, John? The devil to pay. This is my mustache. Can you hold? I reckon I can. Thank you for that Academy Award winning performance. All right, if you're still watching, I applaud you and my hat's off to you after that brutal acting performance. And if you're not watching anymore, uh, I don't blame you. But all right, so let's make our way into the Herps Woods here and let's see where General Reynolds was beginning to organize the Union Infantry. So at around 10.30, the Union infantry began to arrive and began to relieve Buford's cavalry, who was uh, beginning to waver, and you can't blame them. They were between 2,500 and 3,000 strong, and they were fighting a delaying action here, um, which started on Hare's Ridge, uh, west of here, and uh, they were up against almost 8,000 Confederates. Well, they were beginning to waver, and the Union infantry finally arrived around 10.30. So General Reynolds deployed one brigade, north of the railroad cut, which we covered last episode. That was Lysander Cutler's brigade. And he deployed Solomon Meredith's Iron Brigade here on the Union left or south of the railroad cut. Now, they would come into battle here on this field before us, that's Seminary Ridge, and they would begin to make their way. Busy day here on McPherson's Ridge, which is good. But they begin to make their way into the Herps Woods here. So let's go up ahead and see what we can learn. So we are on the outskirts of Herps Woods. And just on the other side of these woods would be Willoughby Run. And Confederates, under the command of James Archer, were advancing through Willoughby Run, up that small slope there, and into Herps Woods. And he was commanding the 5th Alabama, the 13th Alabama, the 1st, 14th, and 7th Tennessee. And they were making their way to this position. Well, General Reynolds would ride up front, and for whatever reason, the 2nd Wisconsin of the Iron Brigade was a little bit ahead of the rest of uh, the brigade. You had the 7th Wisconsin, the 24th Michigan, and the 19th Indiana uh, to the rear uh, forming their battle line. And then you had the 6th Wisconsin in reserve. So the 2nd Wisconsin was brought up and General Reynolds was directing them into the woods. And General Reynolds would say, forward men, forward, for God's sakes, and drive those fellows out of the woods. Then he would fall instantly from his horse, killed by a Confederate mini ball striking his head. And this is the area where General Reynolds is believed to have been shot. Now some say it was a Confederate sharpshooter, but most likely, from what I've read, it was probably a volley from the Confederates in the woods here, directed at the 2nd Wisconsin. So here is the monument dedicated to Major General John F. Reynolds, who was killed here on July 1st, 1863 and the opening salvos here at the Battle of Gettysburg. Now some say he was shot a little farther this way and there were initials on a tree that is no longer here, but the general consensus is it's at least in this general area here. So General Reynolds is down, killed in action. And with him, the plan that he had here is gone. Abner Doubleday would take command and he had no idea what Reynolds' intentions were here. So he was essentially uh, just acting on the fly. And this is that fog of war that you hear so much about, especially during this time. When a commander dies, if no one else knows his plan, 
his plan dies with him. So uh, give some credit to Abner Doubleday here for taking command on the fly and at least holding this position for as long as they did. Now, we just touched on the 2nd Wisconsin was a little bit ahead of the rest of the Iron Brigade. Well, they'd make their way into this general area and uh, their muskets weren't even loaded. They didn't even have time. As soon as they entered the town of Gettysburg, they were ordered at the double quick, which means uh, get your butts up to the line immediately. So they were running to this position and as they entered this position, they'd be hit by a volley by the Confederates here in the Herps Woods. Now, shortly after that, they'd be joined by the 19th Indiana and the 7th Wisconsin. Now, the Iron Brigade roughly had about 1,400 men positioned here on uh, Herps Woods, and they were taking on about 1,200 soldiers in James Archer's Brigade here. Now, just to give you a little glimpse at how fast the fighting was evolving here, the 24th Michigan's color bearer, Abel Peck, was killed instantly upon entering the Herps Woods here. So before leaving this area, I backed up from the Reynolds marker here, and I wanted to show you this perspective. So there you have the McPherson barn in the background, and right here, you have the men of the 2nd Wisconsin, and you have General Reynolds being shot in the back of the head, killing him instantly. And you can just kind of see what this area would have looked like in this depiction, and what it looks like now. All right, so I thought this was a story worth telling here. This is a man named John Burns, and he was a civilian here at Gettysburg, when at the age of 70 years old, he would take up arms and assist the Union forces here. And this is an account from General Doubleday himself. He would approach uh, Colonel Wister here of the 115th Pennsylvania Volunteers, and Colonel Wister advised him to fight in the woods with the Iron Brigade. And uh, Mr. Burns here replied he would prefer to fight in the open fields here, and he would be wounded three times in the uh, combat here at Gettysburg. And I believe this man was a veteran of the War of 1812. And I think the weapon that he would shoulder here would be a flintlock musket from that era. So yeah, here is John Burns. This is a name worth remembering here. So I'm walking through the Herps Woods now, and it is the summer of 2022. Now this battle took place in the summer of 1863 and I just wanted to get a sense of what the terrain here would have looked like especially in the wooded areas. Now I'm not sure how close uh, the foliage here in the terrain resembles what it would have looked like during the uh, Battle of 1863 but I just wanted to kind of get a quick glimpse here. Now if there was uh, animals foraging or put out the pasture um, this area probably would have looked a lot different. The an animals would have trampled down a lot of this undergrowth but uh, just being able to walk on the very ground that a brigade like the Iron Brigade uh, marched across is, uh, you can't beat it. I mean, it's just experience after experience here at Gettysburg. It's just, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> so we've made it through Herps Woods here, through this trail just to the right of this monument here. And we're at the location where the 24th Michigan of the Iron Brigade would begin to threaten the Confederate flank here. Now in the first video, we touched on how Joe Davis's Confederate line extended past Lysander Cutler's brigade uh, north of the railroad cut. And after a few volleys, Lysander Cutler would have his troops retreat with the exception of the 147th New York who never got that order and they'd be mauled there. Well, the opposite was happening here. The Iron Brigade, uh, their forces kind of overlapped uh, James Archer's Confederate brigade here. In the 24th Michigan, was threatening the right flank of the 13th Alabama. So we're at the end of the Union line, which would be the left of the Union line, and it is the end of the right of the Confederate line. So they would push through here and drive back the 13th Alabama back down this ridge here towards Willoughby Run. So I moved down the Union line here just a little bit, whereas you can see here the left flank of the 2nd Wisconsin. Now these markers are all over the battlefield and they actually really help orient yourself if you become a little disoriented um, as to where you are on the battlefield. Um, it's, it's really easy to get confused here. There's so many moving parts. But you can see that marker in the distance here. Get my fat finger. So that would be the extreme right flank of the 2nd Wisconsin. And like we just saw, here's the left flank. And to the left of them would be the 24th Michigan where we just highlighted their actions here and they're beginning to uh, 
fold the flank of the 13th Alabama. And we're gonna head over this direction and see the route of retreat uh, that Archer's Brigade would have taken back towards Willoughby Run. So, hopped across the road here, and this is the point where the Confederates would make their advance in the early morning hours here at Gettysburg. Now, this is where Archer's Brigade would advance to, and they would meet the Iron Brigade here, and then, like we just touched on, the 13th Alabama uh, began to retreat because their flank was threatened, and in turn, the rest of Archer's Brigade here, the uh, Tennessee regiments and the other Alabama regiment, would begin to pull back. Now, those that weren't fast enough <laughs> or didn't uh, retreat were, would be captured, including uh, Archer himself. And we're gonna head down to Willoughby's Run here, and we're gonna see the general area where James Archer would be captured by a soldier from the 2nd Wisconsin. And just to get a sense of the terrain here, uh, we just started our trek towards uh, Willoughby Run here, and you can already see we're already on a downslope here and you can see the 24th Michigan Iron Brigade statue there. So just wanted to show you how much the uh, terrain here uh, is changing. And the Confederates were assaulting up this uh, ridge here from Willoughby's Run. Well, all right, so here we've made it to Willoughby's Run. So this is the position that the Confederates would have advanced over in the early morning hours here, as they were approaching McPherson's Ridge, driving Buford's Cavalry back. And they would advance up through this foliage here, up where we saw the 24th Michigan Monument and Archer's Brigade Monument. And this is where they would retreat back once the 24th Michigan began to fold up the Confederate line, essentially. And the Confederate forces that didn't run or that weren't fast enough, they would be captured, including uh, Brigadier General Archer himself which would make him the first general officer in Robert E. Lee's army to suffer that fate. So he was the first officer captured here. And he would be captured by Private Patrick Maloney of Company G of the 2nd Wisconsin. Now it is said that Maloney saw him, charged towards uh, Archer, and essentially grabbed him. And after a brief struggle, uh, Maloney would overpower Archer and bring him back to the Union line here. Now sadly, Maloney would be killed later that day, but he would receive the Medal of Honor for his actions here at Willoughby Run. Wow. Now once Archer was captured, he'd be taken back to the Union line and he would be greeted by Abner Doubleday. Doubleday would see him and say, good morning, Archer. I'm glad to see you. How are you? And Archer would reply, well, I am not glad to see you by a damn sight. <laughs> I thought that was a uh, pretty comical exchange after a hard day of fighting. Now, once the Confederates were pushed from this area, a midday lull will take over the battlefield. The Union had re-secured the right flank at the railroad cut. The Iron Brigade had pushed Archer's Brigade back across Willoughby's Run here, and the Iron Brigade would actually continue uh, past Willoughby's Run here, heading west. Now, they'd be pulled back to their original lines here in the Herbst Woods, which was a wise decision. But for about two hours, a midday lull would uh, set over the battlefield here. And uh, that's where we're going to conclude this episode. Now, the fighting would uh, kick back up again in a couple hours, and Confederate forces would march through this same terrain here, up towards the Iron Brigade. And that's something we're going to cover in a later episode. So, I hope you enjoyed this one, and uh, like always, we'll catch you on the next one.